Today they are in the world. Tomorrow they are in the news. Next tomorrow they are on the net. I don't care. I don't even listen to news. I've been in the hotel now. I've not switched my TV to know what is, what is my problem with the TV. Would that change my destiny? This is what would change my destiny. You watch a lot of people, they are too focused. You watch too much African movie. African movie is the thing raining now. Everybody loves it. Yeah. What is raining in African movie? Put fear in your heart. Put all manner of thoughts in your heart. When you are sleeping in the night and you see your jacket hanging like this, you begin to bind a bad deck authority. A roach moves anywhere. You, ah. Because they have put so much fear in you. Everybody around you is a suspect. Even the person that's supposed to do you good. Good morning, sister. Good morning. Because you watch a movie that somebody went to do something again. <laughs> good morning. Somebody wears red. Ah! That's the one they wear. They wore in that movie. Did you see that red she walked to church? I saw it in that movie. Broken focus. Attend to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those that find them. And hell to all their situation. The world will change your situation. Focus on the world. How does light enter into you? I close with this. One way that I believe is a missing link in the church. How does light enter into you? By meditating on the word. Many people in the church don't even read the word. Those that read it, read it like storybook. Not many meditate on the word. That is the missing ingredient in the church of Christ today. Meditation on the word. The Bible says in Psalm 39 verse 3, My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then speak I with my tongue. When you are meditating on the word, it's like you put the word on the, on the stove of your heart. Because any issue you have in life has a word solution. If it's, oh my Lord. When I, wanted, when I was believing God for my change of status, to become a, 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 a citizen, I put the scriptures all around me, wherever the soles of your feet shall tread upon. That he has given unto me for inheritance. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God, you are the one that opens it and no man can shut. You are the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. I began to confess it every day until that word enters into my spirit. When they say, where are the citizens here? I raise up my hand. I don't need to have it physically before I raise up my hand because it is he who, he who God approves that is approved. So when God has approved me, I am approved. The word has entered. I can, when I have a word in my situation, I can fight you for it because the light, you see, the manifestation is just the process. The word that has entered is the done deal. Many are not meditating on the word in the church. You have a need. What are you meditating on? You are meditating on your problem rather than the meditating on the word. If you meditate on your problem, then the problem will become bigger than God. But when you meditate on your word, after some time, you begin to see your problem become so little. Huh? Is this why I was fidgeting? Huh? With God, nothing shall be impossible. Huh? Is that why? why, why when God will make a word that seems to be no way, the word, let it be in your heart. That's why Joshua says in Joshua 1, 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according, you need to do according to all that is written there. For then will you make your way prosperous. Then will you have good success. That is light, good success. Not, not creepy success. Everybody open to 1 Timothy chapter 4 if you have the scripture. I will pray. Are you blessed already? Somebody say something is entering into me. When you come out of this conference, you become too hot for the devil. You'll be on fire. The word will be the word. Your light must shine. I say your light must shine. You are leaving this place a shining light. Because the word is creating a reaction in your spirit. 1 Timothy 4.13 If you can stand on your feet, please do. He said, till I come, 
give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy, with the laying on hand of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that your profiting may appear to all. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that your profiting, that means your light may shine to all. When you give yourself to the word of God, you meditate on it. Let it, light will shine. Any word you take, you, you, it, you have suffered enough. That challenge has harassed you enough. It's time for you to get the word that will counter that challenge in your life. Your hour of profiting is now. Amen. I say your hour of profiting is now. Amen. We are going to pray in one minute. You have heard the word of God. We are going to pray for grace. Grace to open up your heart so that the word can penetrate into your heart. The entrance of the word, whatever is hindering, blocking, militating against the word in my life, Lord, take it away at this moment. Take it away. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. Turn yourself loose now. Turn yourself loose now. Turn yourself loose now in the name of Jesus. Turn yourself loose now. Yemakura baba baba sheke baka para baba baba baba. Lima koro baba 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 shanka baka para baba. Lord, you sent a word to Jacob. It lighted all Israel. Send me your word, oh God. The word that will bring about my light to shine. Send me the word in that dark area of my life. Send me a now word, oh God. Yemakula makate kapakate kaparabakaba. I receive grace to open myself for your war. Le makura makantara baba 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 baba. Le makoro baba baba sanka para baba baba. Oh yes, Lord, I receive the grace to be, make my eyes single. In the name of Jesus, Lord, oh God, I want to give myself wholly to your word. Holy to your word. Let that word, oh God, ignite something in me, oh God. I position myself, oh God, for your light right now. Lemagura bagande bakade bakade bakade. Come on, talk to God, child of God. It's your hour. God has brought this liberation your way. God has brought his liberation your way. This is your liberation hour. Light shine it in darkness and darkness can't comprehend it. I will invite doctor to come and pray for us. Bring your prayer to close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we have heard your word. Our spirit has attested that it is the truth. And we know that when truth comes, it nullifies lie. Many of us have lived in lies and a lie. Because of what we had sounded like truth or it was just like the truth but when we had your word now the real truth entered into us and it is the truth that set us free we thank you for the setting free of your people today we thank you for bondage broken yoke destroyed we thank you, o Lord, for the light of your gospel that has been shed upon our lives. We know one thing. We cannot have an encounter with you and remain the same. You just, you, you're too good 
to let us remain the same. You're too awesome to let us remain the same. We let learn from your son Jesus Christ what he did, how he did it. For everyone that encountered him had a testimony. A man with 38 years of infirmity immediately had a testimony. The man who was possessed by demon collagen was immediately having testimony. The woman with the issue of blood contacted you, con have contact with you. She had testimony. Bartimaeus has been living a life of darkness for years. He encountered you. He had a testimony. So also was the woman who was bowed down with infirmity. She came in contact with you. She had testimony. Mary and Martha had their brother dead and buried for four days. They encountered you. Their brother came alive. They had testimony. The widow of Nain encountered you. Her son was dead. Her husband was been dead. Right as she encountered you, she had this testimony. What can we say of you? You are too good to be described. You are too good to rationalize. You are too good to be intellectualized. You are God. Lord, as our heart and mind have been touched by you, let no one leave this arena the same very way they came in the name of Jesus. Let no family remain the same in the name of Jesus. Let no business remain the same in the name of Jesus. Let no one's destiny remain the same in the name of Jesus. Your word has told us that you are the lifter of our head. And we are calm, O God, that our head be lifted up. Your servant whom you have used, I am always amazed at the flow of the word that comes from him. This is an evidence that he has had encounter with you and he has spent time with you. There are some that just speak here and there and just say it and feel good. But there are some who have spent time in deep study and they study because they know the importance of what they are carrying. Lord, continue to empower him. Lord of heaven, continue to add speed to his speed. Lord, just like we said in Simna, that those who have been ahead of him, he will catch up with them. We are seeing the evidence now that he's catching up with them. Not many years he came into ministry and you have already launched him. Father, launch him higher. Father, launch him higher. Father, launch him higher. Father, launch him higher. Father, him higher. There are some people who have never even met Jesus. They are stocked up. They are arrogant. They are pompous, self-considered. But with him, he is such an humble man. Very humble. Without any hesitation, he calls those who could be called father, father. Without any, any outer of pride or arrogance. But some are not even close to him. They have become Mr. Everything. And your word says the proud, the proud, you resist. And resistance from you means breaking down. But those who are humble, you will say you honor them. Lord, I pray for your servant, Bishop Olawale Olaofe. This is the first church that will call him Bishop openly. And we are honored that we are the one that will call him that. Lord of heaven, I pray you will lift him higher. You will lift him higher. With his wife and the children you have given unto them. Lord, we declare by the unction of the Holy Ghost and the apostolic unction upon my life. Lord, you will lift him higher. You will lift him higher. You will lift him higher. In the name of Jesus, you will allow him to make a mark on this world. That when he lives here, many, many years from now, he will live legacy. Thank you, mighty God. I give you praise. I give you praise. Wave your hand to him and wave your hand to God and say, I give you praise. Come on, say, I give you praise, Lord. Wave those holy hands unto him and give him praise and worship him and adore him and exalt his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, God has blessed you abundantly. Hallelujah. When you come to be taught, you become stronger. Uh, in this building that we are in, Things happen. Let me, uh, let me say something for you. Uh, recently, I, I had a testimony I was sharing all over the place of a man who had been in this country for 16 years. And for that 16 years, he was fighting with immigration and naturalization services. And they have denied him over and over again. And they have told him to move back to his country. 
they always stood I know there as one of our ushers. And one day he drove me to a place to preach for my my brother and they call him Sunday call, call him daddy all the time, uh, Doctor Ajim. And he drove me there, and I was preaching. And I started to stand up in that building, and they didn't know him. And I told his story, and I said, "Your story is changed already." Shout out, Amen. We came back to church, and he went to the courthouse, immigration courthouse, where they were to decide to deport him to Nigeria. And he made up his mind. He said, I'm not going to be deported. When I go, I go on my own. I will have my papers. So, 3 o'clock that day, when the judge was about to do whatever I want to do, the judge said, I don't have anything against you. Uh, go back home. You will get your green card in the mail. So, so, he came back home. Two weeks after that, he got his green card in the mail. But what triggered his fate was a pastor came here to ask me for money, and I didn't have the money at that time. And I said, what I have, I'll give it to you. And I said, I don't have any money, but I can give you a green card. I see if I have. I said, give me your rejected uh, and caught work authorization I will use as a port of contact. So he gave it to me, and I prayed about it. And I said, go home. I said, God will give you an early Christmas gift. It was November 16th. December 14th, he ran into the church, shouting and crying, jumping, jumping. And he dropped in my hand the green card. So I gave the testimony in church. So Femi said, if God can do for that man who is a member of our church, then God must do it for me. And what do I do for that pastor? I gave testimony of Sister Kat Kat Kathleen Batiz, who had been here from Trinidad for 10 years and never went home and left a, a file here on the, on the altar, big fight, and I pray upon it. And the next week, they call her for interview. A month later on, they gave her a green card. So that pastor believed in Kathleen's testimony. Amen? So he believed, and so Femme believed in Pastor Awe's testimony. And also in this house today is somebody who has been in this country for a long time and has struggled with immigration. My God, he struggled and struggled and struggled. He lost all, everything he had. He was not a member of this church until about one year ago or so. When somebody, listen, when somebody uh, he was in the women's uh, men conference. He came men conference. when somebody introduced him to the church, and the person who actually introduced him to the church is not even in this church at all. And uh, when he came, he came because immigration issue was driving him all over the place. So, and he's from my town. We're from the same place. We, we don't know each other from there, but we came to know we are from the same jungle. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, same city actually. Uh, I'm sorry to say jungle city. Um, I don't know. So he, he told me his, his story, and I didn't have any way to help him out. He needed over 2,000 or 3,000 to go and reapply. They have rejected him. And I didn't have the money. And he said, Sir, if you can help me get a loan from the member of the church, I will pay it back. And I know the economy of the church. I can't go to anybody. I said, Brother, I will continue to pray for you, but the money I don't have. But this man never went back because we didn't give him money. He continued to come. Last Saturday, a week ago, he testified here that he was never, he was not a Christian. He go to church, but he doesn't know what church means. Until he got to this church, he doesn't even know what it means to be a Christian. He stood here last, Sunday, last Saturday and testified. And last Sunday, Saturday, he brought his work authorization, right? That was when he brought it. For us to know that, where they at least, they have given him work authorization. Last Saturday. Okay, good. That sounds like a good story, right? He gave a testimony. He has never worked for so many months. So he went out and bought a cab to be driving. And we prayed for him here again on Saturday. We said, before too long, you're going to have your paper in your hand, right? He was here. Today he came to the church. I just saw him walking around the place. He will call this one. He will take them out. He will call that one. Take him out. I said, what is this man taking everybody out for? What is going on there? Why is he taking all my members out? So he took the last one out. I called him and said, come here. Why is he taking you out? I just realized that when God has done great things for you. In this house, I've, I've had in my... Where is Ade? Ade Shuru? Okay. Look at that one over there. That one that made me run from that point to this point And ran back again. Why? Because we, everybody thought you would never have a, a green card. And we prayed for her and said, you will get it. And she got it and she brought it to church and put it on her hand. So when she gave it to me, I took off running from there to there and I back and I said, whoa, sit down my dear. This morning, 
Huh? Mama Renegi, where is she? Oh, she's Mama Renegi. Yeah. This one does not know where INS office is. She didn't, she didn't do no interview. The only interview she did was uh, citizenship. And when she went there, she had to ask, where is the direction? Where is their office? She didn't do any interview. They just sent her green card in the house. Have you seen that before? This is one. God of wonder. You don't have to go for an interview in this church and don't go and tell them, my God, everybody has some charm. I don't have any charm. I don't have juju. We just have God. He has house. So this body, the same man that um, immigration has turned down over and over again and has embarrassed over and over again, who has been living in people's houses because they couldn't afford his own house because they've turned him down. Oh, I'm serious to encourage some of you who still have problems with immigration. Come on Friday. Okay, come on Friday. I, I'm serious with you on Friday and with everything that troubles you on Friday. 10 p.m. Tell anyone you find anywhere. I don't have any gimmick or magic. Okay. Last Saturday, I had work authorization in my hand. And today, I'm having green card in my hand. The same person. One week after, the same person. Come on, church. Let me put your hand together for Jesus Christ. Come on, put your hand together for Jesus Christ. Put your hand together for him. Come on. Come. Just stand there. And this one is good till 2021. Last, why are you are still just with him? Last Saturday, you told us, and I was here, that you were not, you call yourself a Christian, but you didn't know how to be a Christian until you came here. That you didn't know how to pray until you came here. You came here not even knowing who are here or not. And the person who brought you here just dropped you here and left. And you are still here. Now, do you know now that God works miracle? Can you tell somebody outside there, not about the man who came from your town, but about a God? God will answer your prayer. Will you tie into it? And, and we shall adjust with you. Now, I want, I'm only bringing you here so all of them can see you. That this which God has done, Agbalabore did not do it. Because if I could have done it, the first day I met you and you told me, I would have given you the green card in my office. <laughs> if I gave you a green card in my office, it would be a counterfeit. And then it will arrest you. And they will arrest me. And we will both be the people in prison. But this is what God did. I want you to live the rest of your life. The rest of your life. Appreciating this God. And serving him. Before you got here, you didn't know what it means to be a Christian. Now you know it. And now you can say, God of heaven can do just about anything. Amen. Amen. Uh, while I'm standing with me, don't worry if you don't have green card. Nobody here can report you. I am behind you. I am behind you. If they report you, I will deport them. Amen. Amen. The mayor is coming here tomorrow to sit down here. If anybody reports you, tell me. I will tell mayor for you. I will just tell Anis. I have somebody who is bothering my member. It's also, I know that person too. But uh, I want to pray for you, okay? If it's green card, if it's a citizenship, if you have any issue with immigration, because the grace is here, I will still pray for everyone on the 30th, next, next Friday. But because you are here now, I want to use this green card in my hand as a point of contact for you. Maybe it's not you. Maybe a, a member of your family that you are believing it has struggled enough. Uh, one woman, I'm about to finish. One woman, you know her, came to Yoruba service one day and she had been running around Missouri City to visit. They are chasing her all over town. She will live here for two weeks and they will, they, they will come looking for her. She will move again. She came to one Yoruba service and I prayed with her. And I went to Columbus, Ohio. I was in Columbus, Ohio. I think Rosie or Park called me and said, a woman is at the parking lot of the church. Rolling on the ground. You know, in the, you're about people when God has done something for them, they have no shame. She just, she couldn't enter the church. 
she parked her car and she was rolling on the floor. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And the cousin said, a woman is rolling. I said, I hope she's not forming, I mean, forming her mouth. She said, no, she's good. I said, only no, only her know why. Then she called me, he said, if they said, he told you I was rolling on the ground, it is me. I said, who are you? She told me who she was. I said, why are you rolling? He said, when I came to your church for prayer, immigration was chasing me all over you see, Missouri City. I was running every time. He said, and you told me they will send me my green card in the mail. He said, I got it in the mail and I couldn't stop at home. I came to roll on the ground. I said, madam, are you done rolling? He said, yes. I said, roll more. Roll more. Ladies and gentlemen, God still work with you. If you are there, come and stand here. I'll pray for you. Now, I'll pray for you. It will be free. Amen. If you have an issue with immigration, any issue with immigration, come and stay here. Amen. Hallelujah. Come and stay here. Hallelujah. If your family member has issue with immigration, come and stay here. I don't have key to immigration office. But I've always said, the same person that signed rejection letter for you shall be the same one that will sign approval letter for you. A man met me in Amsterdam. And he here, but I sat down and came to me. He said, I know you. I said, how do you know me? He said, you have a church in Houston. I said, yeah, I do that. He said, uh, uh, on West Bedford, and I said, no, 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 no. You make, got me wrong. He said, but there's something around front when I said, yes, it's West Airport. He said, yeah, I was there in your breakthrough conference. He said, at that time, it was, uh, uh, the preacher was saying, I saw red letter, approve, approve, approve on somebody's immigration paper. He said, I believe it. He said, two weeks after that, I got a letter from immigration after they rejected me, and it was led, red, bold letter say approved. He said, he said, this is my first time of traveling to Nigeria after many, many years. It was because I came to that meeting and I had the word, I'm going to Nigeria. You know, I may not be able to ask your blind eye to open, but God has given us grace on this. Amen? He has given us grace on this. Miracle was not born where mommy was applied for. It was not in my application. When it was time for them to come, they penciled him into the application. Because it's a miracle. Because God gave us the grace. If it doesn't happen in my life, it can never happen in your life. It has happened for us. A man was deport, about deported in Atlanta, Georgia, in your, in your state. He was already on the plane. They already processed him as a cargo to be shipped to Nigeria. But the wife in Durham, North Carolina, heard me speaking in Durham. And I said to them, as I gave them, I said, I came for a woman here. And I gave the word. I forgot the word and I left. But the man remembered the word. And her husband was on the plane in Atlanta. All about to be flown to Nigeria. But she said, I had the word. The word is clear. My husband is not living here. I had the word and the word is clear. She told me. She said about two hours of the time we were supposed to be shipped to Nigeria. The phone rang. And he said, honey, can you get me a ticket from Atlanta to uh, to North Carolina. He said, ticket for what? He said, I'm coming home. He said, if it's a play, stop it. He said, the man said, I'm not playing. I'm outside now, and I want to fly home now. Now, she said, when he told me that, I, I melted. You know how you pray for something, and nothing comes to you, and you, don't be, you, you can't even believe it is, because it's too sudden. He said, I quickly got a ticket for my husband, I didn't know the man. The man is big, tall. He was bringing me food to my hotel. Tony, I think he, he, he attends this church your brother and me, your uncle attends. He brings me food to the hotel and he will come and just fall on the ground. I didn't know that I've done something wrong. I was wondering, this big man, why is it possible for? You bring food, go. And they said, this is where they asked me to be bringing food. Well, so I can get to know him before I know him. I didn't, take, I didn't know anything about him. And the wife said, my husband called me and he came back home. What happened was a white man climbed onto the plane before he taxied out and came to where the man was sitting. That was what he told me. I don't know about it. He said, the man said, hey, you get up. He said, he got up and the man said, follow me. And he followed him and he went to the captain and he got the file from the captain because the captain was supposed to hand the file over to Nigeria agency. And got the file from the captain and said, follow me out. And you follow him and said, uh, man, you are not going to Nigeria today. Go back home. The man now has his green card. The man is working productively in North Carolina. 
These are people you can, I don't tell story you cannot confirm. Because that's a lie. Amen? When I tell it, I mean it. All of you are standing here and stand for somebody. You are going to be my next testimony. Amen. I told this man, I said, I, I want yours to be my next testimony. Amen. Because it is too old. I told him about Femi in Nigeria. You all know him. Now, I want to 